Bible from Luke, um, Luke 14, and that's from verse 15. Now, this passage in the Bible is, um, I remember this passage when I was small in church, and uh, we, we used to we used to hear sermons about this passage whenever the minister wanted us to be, to attend, to come to church. This was the passage in the Bible that he would use like a whip to get us into church. <laughs> and uh, when we read it, you will hear that. Um, now I thought, I've always steered or veered away from this passage uh, when I make my sermons because I, I didn't want to whip people. And I thought that's what this was all about. So I waited for, for a time where you don't need to whip people to come to church. I mean, everyone's got an excuse to come, not to come to church at the moment with the COVID. And we understand. So maybe now is the time to talk about this. Um, and then I found that this text is much more than just coming to church. So please listen to um, Luke 14 from verse 15. When one of these, uh, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. And then Jesus replied with a parable. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master, and then the owner of the house became angry and ordered the servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and the country lanes and make them come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. we we'll read up to there. I thought of having a banquet, um, having a banquet or a feast, uh, uh, and I thought maybe now is the time to talk about the banquet and the feast, um, and not about coming to church, because when you read this passage, it's not about coming to church, it's about attending the banquet, it's about coming for the feast, it's about coming to a braai, <laughs> quite literally. It's about turning up for in Afrikaans we call it koyer. Um, I was saying to Monica I'm going to use this word because there's no English word for it. Uh, I'm sure there aren't. I, am I right? There's no English word for koyer. Um, you can't say visit. You must turn up for a visit. Now, visit is something you do to the doctor. <laughs> okay. um, so it's a koyer. That's what's talk. That's that's what's uh, that's what on the what's on the cards here. This is what it's about: turning up for a banquet, uh, a feast. And as you know, um, we are, we are closing in on Christmas, and I'm sure we're going to have a big feast. Um, in our house, it's going to be like that. We uh, this will be the first Christmas where all my kids are married. The last one's getting married on Saturday, and we're looking forward to that. And um, so on Christmas Day. We will have them and the in-laws over for Christmas dinner. Isn't that going to be great? So we're going to make a big, big table. And I know my wife loves 
um, setting the table. So I'm sure it's going to be quite a feast. Looking forward to that. Um, so, uh, and having a feast with your family and your friends and lots of people together. Um, one of the big preachers of the world is uh, Helmut Tillicke, uh, a German guy. And he says, he says uh, um, having a feast is one of the greatest pleasures in life. And he starts his sermon on this passage with that. You know, it's the, one of the greatest pleasures in life. Just to have a lot of people and have a big game. Isn't that so? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you've all done that. Uh, and, and then when you get, get home and then you tell people, I've been to a wonderful party and we had such a good time. And uh, it was just fantastic. We love doing that. Isn't that so? We love having a feast. Um, What makes it so good? It's being with, with each other. It's, it's creating memories of interaction of people. It's not necessarily the food or the chamber or the venue where you have this feast. It's, it's more than that. It's the company. Am I right? It's the company. It's where you are. You, you say, Ek het lekker by Koos gekeer. Yeah? It wasn't, we had a good dinner with Koos. Uh, we've been, Koos is the important one. <laughs> it's being with this person, having company, um, being together. The togetherness is what it's about. Um, to have, to have communion. And therefore, when Jesus talks here about coming to this feast, this banquet of his, you likened it to the communion. Isn't that so? The Lord's Supper. That's what we have in mind. That's how we think. Or maybe one day up there in heaven when we're all around the big table and we have this big feast. That's the way we think. But it's, it's the communion, the company, who we are at that makes the difference. Um, it's great to have a banquet. It takes a lot of preparation, but it's also a choice. And I want you to hear that. It is a choice to have a party. It is a choice to have company with people. Um, and I see many people choosing not to do that, becoming lonely and missing out on this company and this good times together. Um, Jesus says there's things that uh, stand in the way. In his parable, he, he, makes, he uses two examples of things that, that come in the way of being in company with other people. Uh, it's, it's our possessions. This one guy, he bought a piece of land, he bought some property, and now the property takes all his attention. Um, it's, it's like saying, I can't come tonight to you because I have to mow the lawn. Uh, you, you understand? Uh, isn't that what happens? We're stuck with all these possessions, and it takes away our ability to come to a banquet, to kair. It, it causes us not to, not to get together because of all these possessions that we have. And then sometimes we have these wonderful properties and houses and built for these banquets. You have these people, they have these houses with these wonderful entertainment areas and a big bride place, but you can see there was no fire in the bride. <laughs> Isn't that so, it's so sad? <laughs> people don't get together. Even though they have these wonderful houses with uh, entertainment areas. It stands in your way and it sort of stops you from visiting. Kair. The second guy got some oxen and he said he wanted to try them out. You know, if you get a new 4x4, you have to go and try it out. <laughs> and if you think about it, that's why you bought it. It was to go and visit. To go to people. 
But then the car becomes more important than the people. I remember when we've been up here to Africa a few times, and then you get three types of people that go up into Africa. The one wants to see animals, the one wants to see people, the other one it's all about is Bucky. <laughs> okay. And you get people that it's all about their car. <laughs> and it stands in your way. They miss out on the people. They miss out on the relations. Loving and caring. Because the bucket is too important. Or the vehicle or whatever you have. The last one probably has the best excuse. He's just been married. Um, I would excuse him if I were the good Lord. But, uh, um, but what he actually wants to say is where you limit... You limit your sociability, your, your company, to just you and your wife, or you and your husband. Now we don't go out, we just stay with, us, with ourselves. When you, when you limit yourself in, it, it's sort of in your way to get to other people. Your family, your possessions, your, your vehicles, there's so many things that, that stops us from having communion, company, literal banquets. We miss out on that. And, and the, the other thing is, it's, it's not in church. It's everyday things, these cars and houses and stuff. It's everyday things. And it's right there in those everyday things where you have to make the choice. Where you have to make the choice to have company, to meet Jesus, to follow Jesus. You see, to follow Jesus is to open up. To follow Jesus is to open up for other people. That's why it says, if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. It's people. The the letter to John says, uh, John's letter the, at the end of the Bible says, you can't love God and hate your brother. You have to, it's the same thing. When he gives the, the, the law, he says you have to love, love the Lord your God with all your might and, and all of that. Uh, and equal to that is to love your neighbor. It's the same thing. So opening your house to people is opening your house to God. It, to open your arms for people is to open your arms for God. It's a choice that you have to make. The Lord Jesus invites. In this chapter it's all about His invitation. He opens His arms. Follow Him in doing it. He calls you. And then please um, note who he calls. It's not always the, the, the top class. <laughs> you get some people, they like to invite high brass people, you know. Um, people of, uh, of high regard. Those are the ones. And, and, and then they normally brag about the fact that, boast about the fact that they know these people. Now, Jesus calls out the lame and the cripples and the blind, the marginalized people, those on the fringes. Don't just limit. He opens his arms to the worst. Therefore, to you too. He calls you to come, each and every one of us. Therefore, when we confess in the Belar Confession, we say, we say, Jesus, God is in a, in a particular way concerned about the marginalized and those and the oppressed. He particularly calls them. Follow Him in doing that. Open your house, open your arms for everyone. There's a saying that says, if you have a lot, don't build walls. Get yourself a bigger table. <laughs> All right. 
If you have a lot, don't build walls. Get yourself a bigger table. Now, we have quite a long table in our house, and I see on Christmas Day we're going to have to extend that. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> don't build walls. And if you look around, you'll see it's normally those who have the most who have the highest walls. Isn't that sad? The poor people, they can't afford the wall anyway. <laughs> Jesus opens his arms. Um, and when he does, there's always space. This um, servant of his comes back and says, Lord, there's still more space. And then what he says is, go out into the country lanes and the streets and the, the, the roads outside and get them in. Do you hear that missional thing about him? It's, it's not just local. It's everywhere. His arms is so wide open. You do the same, please. Follow him. Do the same. Open your arms. Like Jesus does. But the important thing I want you to hear this, this morning, and this is for each and every one of you here, He's inviting you, not just to come to church, He's inviting you to follow Him, to be with Him, to have communion with Him. And He does that by inviting you to have communion with others. He's talking to you. But I also want you to hear there's a sharp end in this passage. There's some sharp words. Remember who you're dealing with. He's the great, he's the great banquet giver. Make your choice. Choose to come. Choose to follow him. Choose to be with him. It's so important now, in this world that we live in now, that you follow Jesus, that we do this. That we get across the borders, that we open our arms, that we get closer to people, that we be exposed to each other, especially in this country of ours. It's so important. So hear the Lord when He invites you, when He calls on you. It's not about going to church. It's about kair. It's about getting across the border, about being exposed. Let's follow Jesus. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Lord, that we can follow you, that you opened your arms for us, that you invited us in, that you, that you opened yourself for us. Lord, we want to follow you. We want to come to your banquets. Lord, we want to have communion with you. But it's so difficult when we see who we have to have communion with. Sometimes people we don't like. Sometimes the company is not what we want. Lord, help us to follow you when you open your arms so wide to even the most marginalized. I pray, Lord, that you will take us by the hand and lead us. Please do not forsake us. Please don't let the last verse be true of us. Please bless us. Please bless each and every one in this church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.